Now, you must be, uh, you must be very excited. I am excited. <laughs> now, you look very young in person. People always say that. You look, what, 15, 16? Mm, maybe. Can, uh, can we tell the people at home how old you actually are? <laughs> yes, I'm 20. That is correct. <laughs> now, we know you from the movie that you just finished shooting. It, it is finished, right? Yeah, it's finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't know, it's a bit of a fairy tale. So, Arthur Fisher, the great director, who uh, you probably know from his movies such as Marion and uh, The Man Who Dreamed, was casting for his new movie, Ambrosio. And so, instead of casting a recognizable face, he, uh, he wanted to find some fresh talent. So, he put the word out and saw, how many was it, uh, 10,000? Oh, I think it was over 20,000. 20,000. Mm -hmm. He saw 20,000 girls. And long story short, he picked you. Yes. And you'd never acted before? Uh, not on the screen. I had uh, done modeling and I liked the theater. Yeah. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. I believe we have a short clip here. Do you want to tell us what we're about to see? Yes, so I play Matilda. And, well, I don't want to spoil things too much. <laughs> uh, she's a young woman who sneaks into a monastery disguising herself as a monk. And then there's a lot of drama and magic and intrigue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Marissa Marcel as Matilda, a woman disguised as a young monk. Here we go. The same magic that powers this lens can also grant you what you wish. How so? You remember the night that I was to die, when we took to St. Clair's sepulchre? That night, I performed a rite. I summoned a fallen angel to aid me. What have you done? Wow. Quite a role for your first movie. <laughs> well, Mr. Fisher was quite the teacher. Now I heard he can be quite demanding. Well, you know, he has a, an idea of the picture in his head, and um, nothing is going to come between him and that, not even the actors. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is <clears throat> Mr. Fisher's first film with nudity, correct? Yes, well, you know, he felt that a modern motion picture should reflect the times. And you uh, film this in Europe? Correct. They go for that in Europe, the nudity. Yes, our, our producer said, uh, we are born naked, and if we are lucky, we die naked. So why not shoot the movie naked? <laughs> well put. He kept his clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the picture is out soon? I hope so. Yeah. And now, you're not in New York only to talk about Ambrosio, but uh, you're filming another picture. That's right, yes, with uh, John Jurek, who was the director of photography on Ambrosio. We're writing it together. That is amazing. You are smarter than you look. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. So what, what is this movie about? So uh, it's called Minsky, and uh, it's about uh, an artist who is killed, and the suspect, the number one suspect, is his muse. That's the part I play. And there is a detective investigating, and he falls for her. Well, I can't blame him. <laughs> well, he, he has a cop mindset, and it's really about the clash between the artists, how they live, and, and this cop mindset, the conservative mindset, I guess. He is... Um, surprised by how messy the lives of artists are. Oh, that's true. That's true. We've had some on the show. Mm -hmm. Mr. Warhol. Have you met Mr. Warhol? Oh, yes, yes, we've met. Yes, yes. we had him on the show and he hardly spoke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> such a towering figure and yet such a small, quiet man in person. You know, but his superstars, though, that's what he calls them, superstars. They are quite, uh, playful. Yes, we'd, we'd like to put some of them in our movie. Well, just make sure you've got a chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you like New York? Oh, yes, I love it. The people are so interesting. All right, well, we've got to take a short break here. Do you mind reading this out yes. uh, for us? Now, marvelous magic will turn the next 60 seconds into a commercial. Magic indeed.
Free Echo, take three. short break I'm helping a friend going to New York Heather Roberts taking a short break I'm helping a friend I'm going to New York Heather Roberts taking a short break I'm helping a friend Going to New York, Heather Roberts. Taking a short break. I'm helping a friend. Is this the last one? I'm helping a friend. I'm helping a friend. I'm helping a friend. I'm helping a friend. Right, we got it. Okay. I'm helping a friend. Marvelous magic will turn the next 60 seconds into a commercial. Magic indeed. All right, let's finish up for the day. Exterior, Madrid. Time lapse. Rooftop view of Madrid. Hurriedly, we pass from night to day to night again. Interior, Chiquinta's house. A virus room. Antonio sits by her mother's bed in her nightgown. You seem much improved, Mother. I have Father Ambrosio to thank for that. His words calm me. He has a great love for religion. And he speaks so well. His voice is so familiar to me. It reminds me of someone I once knew. But I cannot think who. Perhaps someone from when I was a child. 
You should sleep now, Mother. I am glad you're well, but I'm fearful of a relapse. Oh, worry not about me, child. You are the one who needs to sleep, staying up to keep watch on me. I would hate myself if I'm the cause of the first wrinkle on your perfect face. Mother. Sleep well. Good night. He kisses her mother's head. And we close for the day on the cusp of great violence. <laughs> now, we have been encouraged by our hosts to go take a reposo. I find the idea quite decadent, but um, when in Rome... <laughs> will we be taking siestas during our shooting? I'm afraid not, darling. We will be shooting with an Italian crew, but in the American style. <laughs> Action. One more time. Okay. I'm, no, I can't. Yeah. My arms don't work. No, I can't. I can't. Please, let's 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 sit down. Okay. Oh, God. oh. Okay. So you, how how is home life? You you've been with Mark for a while now. Yeah, it's good. Mark is great. He's um very good looking. He is. Uh, he is a very handsome man. Now, if you guys decide to have kids, you know they're going to be very good looking kids. Is that something that's on the agenda? Oh, I don't know. You know what? One cat is enough of a handful. So. I did not know you had a cat. I do, a her. Okay, what is she called? Maria. Not like... Okay, so no, no. You you named the cat after yourself. That uh, shows great humility. <laughs> uh, it's probably easier to remember that way, right? Hey, when we come back, we have the stars of TV's hit new comedy. Don't go anywhere. Bye. I looked into the game. Sorry, guys. It's a force of habit. Let's get my close-ups. We'll have to cut to me at that point anyway. Cinematic types that are actually quite freeing. And here, the most powerful character, the freest character, is mine. It's liberating to wield that kind of power. I understand there are quite heavy love scenes in this picture. Is that something you find uncomfortable? Well, I think those scenes are there for a reason. You know, it's a part of the plot that feels important. It's not gratuitous. I think the way I enjoy them. I think more people should try it, take their clothes off on camera. <laughs> How about you, Sophia? Oh, well, I'm a good Catholic girl. Making a movie is about capturing the light that bounces off your skin and, and recording it on film and then releasing it to the audience in the theaters. Mm. When you're sat in the theater, the light that hits your eye, it's part of this chemical chain that reaches back to and touches my skin. I think in that way, if we'd make movies that show more of the body, it could be a powerful magic. You make it sound indecent. <laughs> and do you hope to do more acting after this? Have you got a taste for it, Marissa? Oh, I very much hope so. <laughs> Had them fetch my heart. Before I became a novice, I practiced often. I'm told I play well.
more. The music is like an orgasm. Wait. How is this possible? Yes. I'm the original of your Madonna. I had hoped to keep this secret. Before my life in the Abbey, I had many admirers. Believe that I paid them no attention. One was the artist Martin Galuppi. He petitioned me to sit for him, and I was compelled by my parents to agree. He gave the painting to me as a gift. Embarrassed by the blasphemy. Out there. We're good? Okay. We're moving uh, over to the bed now. We'll finish the story there. What a succession of calamities. I will sit with him myself. Thank you. Perhaps your wisdom can convince the child that life on this earth still has some promise. I will try. Ah, print it. with alcohol and a late night swim. The NYPD have refused to confirm the presence of drugs, stating they are unable to disclose the details of an ongoing investigation. Her body will be flown back to Los Angeles later today, where we'll head to the county coroner's office for an autopsy. If you're just tuning in, we're reporting on the death of pop star Maria at the age of 25. We're continuing our coverage with Dr. Morty Biggs, here to talk to us about this Gary, it's, it's Heather. I know, I know. Gary, I know. Maria is dead. which side I'm playing sometimes. Yeah, that was great. Oh my God, your bed. <laughs> I never make my bed. Oh, I always do, even on vacation. You know, they have people in hotels that can do that for you. I know, I just, I can't help it. It's how I start my day. Oh, is this my infamous namesake? <laughs> oh, hi, Maria. You old bitch. You're so pretty. Here's my wallet. Um, you can use my card, but uh, just don't spend over 200 bucks because it'll go over the limit. I'll behave. <laughs> Let's swap phones, too. There we go. Thank you. Christina Campbell. Thought you had it changed. I did. I just didn't update my license yet. Maybe you're younger than you, too. Gary was wrong about us being long lost twins. <laughs> So, I'll feed the cat. Right, so got her food all set up over here, just one scoop in the morning and one at night. Um, she likes to have a little tuna water mixed in if you have a can open. I can show you how to run the dishwasher. I know how to run a dishwasher. <laughs> right. Um, well, my neighbor across the courtyard is Dorothy. She's super sweet. She'll let you into the complex if you forget your key. There's a good noodle place downstairs. Oh, and if... Uh, Someone bangs on the door at night, just uh, scare them off with this. Is it real? Sure. My dad gave it to me when I moved out here. It's not registered, so you could kill someone with it and they couldn't trace it. Heather. <laughs> I'm my dad's only child. 
He taught me to never point a gun at someone unless you're prepared to use it. It's not that rough a neighborhood. I'm just messing with oh. you. Uh, there's a church across the street that starts up every Friday night, but the music is great. Oh, and the donuts next door to die for. Ooh, sounds good. Yeah, it sounds really good, actually. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go then. Okay. <laughs> Promise you'll still be my double when you get back? You're not gonna quit when you get rich? I don't know. Maybe I'll get a taste for it. Bump you off. I'll be the real Maria. Oh, you don't have it in you to kill. <laughs> Bye. Bye. We hold on Heather's face as she walks down her balcony, walks towards the stairs. Her smile grows with her confidence. That's great, Naomi. Now let's swap places. Will you be Heather, Marissa, you be? Maria. Uh, can I quickly watch back what we just did? I just want to make sure I lock how you did it in my head. Sure. Sure. It was a hot kiss. <laughs> Kiss involves more senses than penetration. It's a magical thing. I give you surprise and hotness on the day, and that works for me. Okay. <laughs> I have to be stupid to pick a double who's a worse singer than me, right? Smart. Maybe I should get a fake you, one that's more respectful. Impossible, one of a kind. Babe. I could find 10 more of you without even leaving the zip code. <laughs> You're sweet, though. And it would be time consuming to house train another. So stick around. I love it when you demean me. Cut. OK, going straight again. Mark, keep your arm down when Marie kisses you. to the standing close-ups. Miss Perkins, you can flirt with Carl now. Okay. <laughs> hey, you need some change? Buy your brother a shirt. I wanted to preserve her voice with posterity. She loved him. She begged him to take her back. But she also remembered the bad stuff. She gave a necklace he made her as a gift to a friend. He was so angry, he put a cigarette out in her face. If you look in his green portrait 32, you can see the burn mark. He painted it in. Olga was 15 when they met. In the same way he repainted and repainted to reduce his paintings to pure form, he broke his girls down until they were the forms he wanted. When he's done with you, you have nothing left. The rest of the world is just negative space. Was he done with you? No. I was different. I was done with him. Slowly, tenderly make love. Sitting up in the glow of the heater. Okay, let's, let's make this exploratory conversation. Marissa, how would you want Carl to touch you if this were you? He should kiss my neck and shoulders, then pull my hair. Carl, how would you want Marissa to touch you? Uh, <laughs> this is all good. I mean, uh, let me think about it, okay. Goodman looks out the studio window. He stops. 
sees Olga in the window across the street, looking directly in the studio. Goodman is dumbstruck. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to react. <laughs> and we cut. <laughs> Subtle have ten uncles for bear witness. Blood, semen, hair, tissue, spittle, urine, feces, vomit. There's a reason they invented a mnemonic for that. Uh, make sure you enter that book you picked up in the ledger. Of course, I miss the protocol. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not break chain of evidence. Homicide, Homicide investigation, investigation is a sacred, sacred mission, mission from God. God. We speak, speak for the dead. dead. Great from down here. <laughs> Should we do one more for fun? I could do this all day. <laughs> also wants to use this evening to put behind her the awful business with the girl. I forget her name. Agnes. Yes, Agnes. Well, I believe the return to health of yourself and young Rosario is enough to give thanks for. If I may excuse myself, I have some business to attend to before the celebrations. I will return in time. What is so urgent on feast day? I promised the late Antonio that I would pray by her body on this day to secure the passage of mother's soul to her side. She was worried that her mother died without absolution. A deathbed promise. Well, you cannot break that. Later, father. Cat. Maybe start eating the orange earlier. Okay. Where are you headed? I would speak further with Antonia. I feel a responsibility to soften her suffering. She's ill. She dreams of visions of her own death. Your concern is touching. No, I'm no prostitute. Besides, I'm a poor substitution for Antonia's unbroken purity. The spell was wasted. I now have no claim to Antonia. There is a way. Huh. Her grief and this dream she has spoken of adds form to a plan I have considered a while. In three days, she will be dead to the world. But she will live for you. For magic? This herbal mixture, a secret of the prioress, produces in its drinker the appearance of death. Administer a few drops to Antonia. She will be thrown into strong convulsions after which her blood will cease to flow. She will appear as if a corpse. Having no family, you may appoint yourself the superintendent of her funeral. Have her buried in the vaults of St. Clair. Their isolation and remoteness is favorable to you. Give her the drink this evening. And 48 hours after, life will return to her bosom. She will wake in your power, your slave. Necessity will bend her to your affections. Matilda, you are a true friend. I live to serve you. Less subservient. I live to serve you. Like this, I live to serve you. I live to serve you. Oh.
Rehearsal, scene 31, Olga's apartment. A team of two detectives and Ruby are searching the place. Ruby points Goodman to a collection of photos on the wall. Art appreciation. Chances. You know, I will 
take advantage of you being frozen in place to steal a kiss. I have heard great things about you. I can see they're all correct. No, John, I did meet Picasso once before. It's very short and rude. He did do me a sketch on a napkin. I'm just waiting for him to die, so it'll be worth something. You don't care for him. Oh, no, 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 no. I am not a fan of cubism. It just seems inherently wrong to take a beautiful woman and turn her into a bunch of triangles. Got that from your documentary? I don't want to be dismissed as a cultural heathen. You know, John, I was thinking, I can make a few requests. Mm. This film. Named after him. I feel like we should make things feel right. We're done with this shot. No one is gonna care whether or not I have briefs on. They're too busy looking at Marissa cavorting around. Who is the shot, Douglas? You lie there, I'll direct. We're done. We're going again. No, I think not. Never in my career have I been expected to work like this. You, sir, you're not a director. You're a fucking pervert with a camera. My name is John Durick. I'm six foot three, 42 years old, and I will be auditioning for the role of Minsky. <laughs>
hold it, intrigued, enraptured. He's coming to the door. And cut. And cut. Can we go again? I had Marisa in my eyeline. Oh, God. Sorry. described the Saab's Juliet as a new type of human, a woman with wings who will renew the universe. Have that strength, that moral power, as you stand naked. No shame. Now, the ritual. Yes. Three human fingers. An agnus stay. Now, the dagger. Dark smoke. A crack of thunder. The ground shakes. He comes. The ground is still. Strange music fills the air. Satan appears. An unearthly beauty. The fallen angel. Evoir. Evoir. Ta. Gebad neba se. Zroy zi wazi. Kyud zi. Niam zi. Drol zi nazies. Satan vanishes. Lucifer was unhappy to help a monk, but I compelled him. I have exhausted my currency. In the future, you will have to bargain with him yourself. But today, we have what we need. Hold this constellated myrtle. With it in your hand, every door will open to you. Tomorrow night, use it to access Antonia's chamber. Then breathe on it three times and pronounce her name. She will enter a deep sleep that will not leave her till morning. You may satisfy your desires fully. When she wakes, she will perceive her dishonor but be ignorant of its cause. With this service, I have proven to you my friendship and lack of jealousy. Matilda, Soon I've... it will be dawn. We must return to the Abbey before we are missed. They will make a Matilda out of this Rosario. Oh, you're awesome, sit in my life. And again, we're weird. Check the gate and let's grab that mother-daughter on, Marissa. But it is sweeter still. <laughs> your surrender was unnecessary. Those guards at your door, they were sent to free you. A last-minute pardon issued by the Inquisition to safeguard the sanctity of the cloth. You would have walked free. Oh, you have to go and shrug. 
<laughs> you promised to save me. I promised to take you from the dungeon, save you from the Inquisition. That I did. I have fulfilled my part of the bargain. Now your eternal soul is mine. I claim my prize. And cut! Arthur, that's hard in the dress. I hate the dress. Not shocking. Can I try something? In a crypt, Satan is naked. The devil doesn't need clothes. No, no, a new woman is not scary. Kick up the wind machine, have her hair whip around like she's Medusa. How's that? For the boss training. Can we please cut and talk this through? Happy to go straight into a tank? Fuck you, monk! Uh -huh. To Charlie, take two. And action. Please, take my seat, my child. And mine, for your companion. May I remove your veil? No. I do not remove my veil in public, senor. Where is the harm? The other ladies have removed theirs. It is not custom in Murcia, senors. We are newly arrived here. Where? This is Madrid, senora. In Madrid, we show God our faces when he speaks to us. We must hush now, for here comes his vessel. The holiest of men, and handsome too. Beloved congregation, there are many of you here today. I see much finery. Expensive clothes. Beautiful hair. But I see little holiness. I see wantonness. I see God's servants doled up like peacocks. Here, in his house, to see and to be seen. Who amongst you is truly innocent? Who amongst you is not soiled the perfect flesh gifted to you by our Lord? Some of you, perhaps, but not many, I wager. Lent approaches, a period for which we deny ourselves of everything, a time when temptation appears to us like it did to our Lord Jesus, clothed in any appealing disguises. Why was Jesus put to such a test? It was not to test him, he's divine, he's perfect. It was to show us how to live. Temptation exists as a force, one that repels us, one that pushes us towards goodness, towards heaven. You all know my story, but I've spent my life in this abbey. I've never walked the streets of Madrid as a man. I am as pure today as the day my creator shaped me. Do I look weak? Do I look feeble? No. I am strong because my virtue fuels me. My power is granted me by the divine. Think of the Virgin. How Mother Mary. How does she look? Beautiful. Perfect. All of the blessings of the feminine with none of the faults. Her purity is power. Her radiance. Her faultless complexion shows her as a weapon of God. Her innocence is strength. For those dragged low by Satan, who feed at his trough of sin, how do they look to you? Hollow, huh? 
diseased, already half dragged to the sepulchre. Look to your neighbor. Look, see the sin about their lips. Run from their iniquity. Let it compel you towards God. <laughs> the holy do well to surround themselves with a city such as Madrid. Proximity to this sin makes us more holy like, like a flower growing from the grave. God's truest thrive in such a place. Look to me as your guidepost. Never have I known sin, never will I know sin. Satan's pleasures are nothing to me. They pale next to the glories of God. It's not too late for you. Give yourself fully to God. And his holy fire will cleanse you. And you too will be born anew. She's crying. Cat, reset. Let's grab Alvira's close ups while Miss Morgana fucking pulls herself together. We can do Marissa shot too and leave the setup. In. This has been my first time working here in Italy, and my first time working with the great Arthur Fisher. I just want to say thank you for trusting me to be your Ambrosia. What a movie. I always say, you can't make an A picture without an A team, and this has been an A team. Look, we took an 18th century novel and made a 20th century picture out of it. That's pretty magical. M.G. Lewis, I don't know if you're up there or... Down there. <laughs> Wherever you are, I hope you like what we made. VMO. <laughs> Arthur, you want to say something? Come on. As you know, I work behind the camera, and I usually have someone to write all my dialogue, so I'll keep this short. You all have been wonderful, and I'm sure you're probably sick of hearing me talking, so I'll shut up. Thank you, Gino. Thank you, Robert. And Marissa, get up here. <laughs> and all of you, you've been a marvelous crew. <laughs> my first movie. <laughs> what a first movie. I feel like I just went through four years of film school and acting school and just life in a few months. What a team. Arthur, you were harsh but fair. For everything you put me through, I learned a lot. And your karma is having to spend the next six months staring at footage of me while I sleep it off. <laughs> I hope you see something you like in there. Everyone, a big round of applause to our star. Our gorgeous, la bellissima Marissa Marcel. <laughs> I love you all, and I'm here only to say that I pay for the bar for the next hour. It is rare that I'm this generous. So please, have a drink and toast to our new friends, to movies. To, to movies! <laughs> Cheers.
bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. Marisa, <laughs> you're a marvelous. You're gonna get me excommunicated. <laughs> Ready for your close-up, Tino? Do you understand now? You are a big girl. You're falling out of your dress. You don't know who you're fucking with. I'm Maria. Wait till the world hears about this. I'm gonna sue you. I'm gonna have Andrew put away. I have money. I have power. You have power. Money. You're not in our league, sweetheart. Andrew could rent out Yankee Stadium tonight and pay every single member of the NYPD to come out and watch him rape you on home plate. You're nothing. Everybody knows who I am. The public does. But the people that matter know Andrew. He's the most connected man in the city. He belongs to a different world. And you just threatened him. Do you understand what that means, dear? I'm Maria. He's gonna be on the front page of every single fucking newspaper in America tomorrow morning. I'm gonna destroy you. You could have walked away from this. I am walking away from this. No. I don't think you are. Do it. Do what? What, what are you doing? What are you doing? It's, uh, it's not just an argument, right? It's, uh, let's take it to the bed. It's foreplay. It's, uh, a wrestling match. Yeah, I love it. I'm just gonna go for it. Keep up. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. You are nothing without me. You will always be a footnote in my biography. You didn't create me. Yes, I did. I found you and I made you what you are. There are millions of pretty girls and I made you singular. You are as much a creation of Minsky as all of these paintings. <laughs> Without me, you cannot paint. I will leave you, and I will sell my own paintings, and I will forget you, and you will be alone. A model who paints is amusing, like a dog who walks on two legs. People will find you amusing for a while. It is impossible for you to be an artist. I will kill you. 
You lack the masculine power for that kind of violence. Let's fuck, and tomorrow you can apologize. Tomorrow I will kill you. Hey, cut! <laughs> fuck Douglas Simon! <laughs> fuck Douglas Simon! <laughs> but I don't remember Santora. What kind of people? People who work in the arts. Painters, sculptors, models. Minsky ever get into anything with anyone at the warehouse? Minsky didn't come in that often. He looked down on us. He even told Franny to stop coming by. He took her under his wing when she was 17 and didn't want us expanding her horizons too much. <laughs> Franny expanded her own horizons plenty. She was already painting before she met him. Minsky you have a... Franny ever mention uh, Frankie? Centora? I told you I never heard that name before. But everyone has more than one name. I wasn't born Holly Honey, you know. Frankie Santora sounds like a drag act or a gangster. Maybe you should try Club 88. There's plenty of both there. Hey, bye. <laughs> the real Susie will be far worse. I'm just warming you up. For a few hours, you should arrest me or give me something to eat. Where were you last night? I was at the warehouse. It's a studio, a hangout, a party. I crash there sometimes. Write the address for me. Beautiful. Carl, I wasn't joking. 
Except for this one, we are fully funding this one ourselves. Interior, Pepe Incognito. Maria and Heather sit over smoothies at the back table. It wasn't that bad. I'm going to be in every gossip mag for the rest of the month. <sighs> Screwed up. So what? They already thought I was self-obsessed. It was funny. They were going to get something out of you one way or another. You gave me a pet. That makes me relatable. Cheers. You've done so much for me. You've done a lot for me, too. You saved my ass with Gary. He's not your boss. He's not, but I gotta admit I need the guy. I just wish he would quit it with a stupid birthday party. Ten million dollars isn't stupid. It's a lot of money. I know, I know. And that Andrew Hessenberg guy actually seems kind of cool. I looked him up on the web. He's friends with George Clooney. I'm sure he's great. It's the principal. They think they own me. I mean, what's next? Shopping malls? Cruise ships? The money's nothing. Not nothing to me. What? Ten million dollars? It's a lot of money for someone like me. The girl who just served us? Everyone else in this cafe? I'd swap places with that server right now if I could. I used to wait tables. I was happier then. It's not easy, like, wanting something, and then you get it, and... Where do you go? Never gonna sell as many records as last year. Who am I doing this for? I wanted to be a singer, and now I'm a fucking CEO. When was the last time I enjoyed singing? It's not that bad. You want to be me? That's not how this works. Why don't you do it? It's a party. You can have the 10 million. <laughs> I couldn't. After what happened on the show, you've done this before. You Sing a few songs, smile. You can keep the money, give it to charity, whatever you want. I'll get a weekend in peace, work in my studio. I couldn't. 10 million. Great. next month. Cut. Larry, let's go again. More fatherly this time. Patronizing. Station corridor, Goodman Walker, walk and talk. There was a robbery there last year, so we pulled the names of the tenants. Your name rang a bell for me, so I dug out the file. Frankie Santora is on the list. I spoke to the janitor. Says Frankie's a tough guy, uses it as a fuck pad. Hands Goodman an address and a piece of paper. They stop at a junction. Sure you don't want me to ride along? Uh, uh if it turns into... I'm just gonna snoop around. 
turns into Bonnie and Clyde will call you. Locker leaves, shaking his head, couldn't scan his address again. <laughs> I like it. Have you ever said fuck on screen before? I, I don't think I have, no. It shows. Give me that line again. Uh, you said you said earlier you only photograph people you want to fuck. You said you said earlier you only photograph people you want to fuck. <laughs> fuck. Just the word. Fuck. 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 You said earlier you only photograph people you want to fuck. 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 Fuck the fuck. Help. 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 Portrait of the artist. He looks unhappy. He didn't like being looked at. Said my work was amateur. Is that what he was working on before he died? He was trying to reduce my face to pure form. He painted over each line 50 times to remove any meaning from it. The pure essence of Franny, just lines and colors. He liked my lines. But all the rest was a distraction. That's vandalism. Now it's worth more. Did you ever read his diary? I wrote it. Every morning he would have me read his letters to him and then I'd write down his thoughts from the previous day. But there's an entry from the day he was murdered. If you've already guessed it, just say so, detective. I found the body. I couldn't process it. I wrote the diary, got ready for the show and headed out as if everything was fine. When you found the body, was there a mask? Some kind of mask? No. He was naked, there was blood. First I thought it was a game. Sometimes he would act weak, so I wouldn't want to leave him. But... Can I ask you about these marks? I hope you didn't get too hung up on these, Detective. Each mark shows that we had sex. The symbols show the type and frequency. Vanilla, we both came. Oral, both came. Rope play, we came. Anal. Okay. You asked. He was active for an older man. Minsky and the rest, art is a procreative endeavor. A masculine act. To paint me, he had to fuck me. To paint me fully, he had to fuck me. Fully? How did Kilkminski cut off his penis? How about you, detective? Do you need to fuck me to decide if I'm guilty? <laughs> uh, who is Frankie Centora? I don't know. His name appears 12 times in the diary and he doesn't show up in any records, so. Maybe he was one of Minsky's dealers, one I never met. Well, you wrote it. It's just a name. You should go now. I'm about to go to sleep. I sleep naked. I'll be in touch. What's your name? Goodman. Your first name.
of the tube. You can't breathe. More panic. Release. Action. Dreams such as these are not uncommon. The devil will sometimes use our memories against us, make us children again, so that we forget our knowledge of sin. You often dream of your life before you joined the convent. Yes, and on waking, I yearn to return to the dream. Is your dream lustful? No, Father. I am sorry for these and all my sins. Next time you wake from such a dream, I suggest you immediately pray. The devil's trick should not rid you of your grace. To your penance, I give you ten Hail Marys. My God, I am sorry for my sins with all my heart. In choosing to do wrong and failing to do good, I have sinned against you, whom I should love above all things. I firmly intend, with your help, to do penance, to sin no more, and to avoid whatever leads me to sin. Our Savior Jesus Christ suffered and died for us. In his name, my God, have mercy. God, the Father of mercies, through the death and resurrection of his Son, has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit amongst us for the forgiveness of sins. Through the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace, and I absolve you from your sins. In the name of the Son, and of the Father, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Bless you, child. On your way. Sister, you dropped your letter. No, Father. Oh, daughter. I must read this. Then I am lost. You intend to flee the convent. You are with child. Where is the domino? Please, Father. Use your holiness to forgive me. Bring my soul back to heaven. Do not do me. To conceal your crimes would be to soil myself with your sins. Where is Please, Lady Prioress? Father, please. You cherish in your bosom a snake. No. Please. Cruel. Cruel. Not cruelty. Mercy. I would rescue you from perdition. Wretch. You have shamed our order before the holiest man in Madrid. Lady Prioress, I trust you to administer the punishment which you deem appropriate. No. Penance and mortification shall expiate her offense. We will answer the crime with holy rigor. No. Take her to the convent. No. Murder! I curse you for my death and that of the innocent in my belly. God will show us mercy where you have failed. Destroyer, you are so proud of your virtue, but where have you tested it? Coward! You hide from the world. One day your trial will come, you will yield. And when you do, remember your cruelty today. Remember me? And the spirit of pardon! No, please! I have done my duty. Can we go again? I have some ideas from reacting to Robert. I think we're good. Save it for when we're rolling. Let's go again, we get about 10 minutes of light left.
A lot of the time, men and women act like it's survival of the fittest, eat or be eaten. You meet a guy, and you gotta decide who is eating and who is getting eaten. Well, it doesn't have to be that way, Steve. We're both top of the chain. We can have fun without anyone getting hurt, unless they want to. If you want me, just tell me. Give me a drink, I'll drink it. Give me a cigarette, I'll smoke it. Hell, give me your lips, I'll kiss them. Just don't act like you don't want me. That's disrespectful. Bravo, my dear. You are a marvelous crossbreed. I infer you've been told that I am looking for a femme fatale, but uh, that is only half the story. Thank you. I lied about burning her letters. I told Minsky I did, but I kept them. Wanted to preserve her voice for posterity. What's in them? She loved him. She begged him to take her back. But she also remembered the bad stuff. She gave a necklace he made her as a gift to a friend. He was so angry, he put a cigarette out in her face. If you look at his green portrait 32, you can see the burn mark. He painted it in. Jesus Christ. Olga was 15 when they met. In the same way he repainted and repainted to reduce his paintings to pure form, he broke his girls down until they were the forms he wanted. But when he's done with you, you have nothing left. The rest of the world is just negative space. Was he done with you? No. I was different. I was done with him. Okay, let's uh, go again from the top to the touch board center. Nineteen B, take three. Action. I'm gonna make you live forever. <laughs> this is not Don't something. talk. Take your shirt off. It's getting in the way of the lines and colors. You know, Minsky used to insist I walk around the studio naked at all times, so he could absorb my form. I was only allowed to sunbathe nude because tan lines ruined everything.
would like to do something more sculptural. I spoke to the neighbor, the one who discovered the body. Mm -hmm. A guy with a girl's name, Allison. Uh, so Mr. Minsky was expected at a gallery event, but didn't show. So they rang and asked Allison to call in on him. Is he friendly with the victim? Says he modeled for him. I thought Minsky only painted women. He's got a girl's name. Says he was booked to come around tomorrow at 2 o'clock. So he was expecting to be alive tomorrow. That clue. He wasn't expecting to be murdered. Good work. Dead, naked celebrity, Paul Goodman. There's a missing penis, too. You're Mr. Sex Murder. It didn't bleed much. I figure the penis was cut off after the heart had stopped beating. The real cause of death was asphyxia. Given the nakedness and penis disfigurement, I say sexual asphyxia. Well, I don't see anything to do with the asphyxing. He didn't choke himself. There is external signs of hypoxia that he wasn't smothered or strangled. No defense marks, no bruises, I'm guessing mask or gag. They took the murder weapon away. I always do. Deviant psychology. Indeed. Well, I'd better head off. Already? Allison said Minsky's expected at a gallery show. Perfect chance to canvas the suspects. I'll come back after. I'll be here. Be subtle, have ten uncles for bare witness. Blood, semen, hair, tissue, spittle, urine, feces on it. There's a reason they invented a mnemonic for that. Uh, make sure you enter that book you picked up in the ledger. Of course. I missed the protocol. Thou shalt not kill. Thou Radiance. Her faultless complexion shows her as a weapon of God. Who's there? Only Rosario. Enter, my son. I brought some flowers from the garden that I thought you would like. Your attentions charm me. You were impressive in church today, Father. I cannot take credit for the Lord when he speaks through me, but you enjoyed my discourse. Oh, yes. I've never heard such eloquence. Well, save once. Who? Oh. When and who was this? Yourself, Father. When you preached after the passing of our late superior. Yes, I remember. You were present. You were not yet a novice then. I was there. But perhaps I wish that God had not led me there that day. I would have avoided some suffering. Suffering? At your age, Rosario. Yes. My heart yearns to tell, but I fear to lose you. How could it be so terrible to sever my love for you? There's the bell for Vespers. We must go. Seek me out after confession. I cannot leave your mind so vexed. Stores, but I died when I was a teenager. 
So you're rich. <laughs> and you chose to be a cop. <laughs> oh, Detective Goodman, you're more fucked up than I thought. <laughs> an original yeah I know it's me you've had this all this time two years <sighs> I thought I was seducing you have I ever been more to you than this? You're seeing me through Minsky's eyes. Oh, that's a, that's a coincidence. Who were you fucking two hours ago? Uh, I was fucking you. And who, and who do you think I am? You're you. Huh, what am I? You're Franny. I don't even know your first name. You don't know who I am. You don't know anything about me. I know you. No, you don't. You want to know who I am? I'm the one who killed Minsky. I told him I was gonna leave him. He told me I could only leave him when he said. Scene 42B, take four. I'll take that. What are you reading? Uh, embezzlement and white collar crime. Oh, that's no fun. They're the real criminals. <laughs> I guess I like a juicy murder. Duty. Somewhere I need to be. Cut. Check the gate, and that's a wrap for today. Oh, that was so much fun. Fantastic to work with you, Mr. Greenwood. You can call me Carl.
I need to be. You will remember this, my sweetheart. Door? I heard a noise. It cannot be. Monster, destroy your virtue. You are not safe. Speak, go! It's not what it seems. Cat! Check the gate and then let's turn around. And action. Hold it. Intrigued. And cut. Could I kiss his face? Would you see that? Sixty-three apple. Take one. She's dead. She's dead. Looks sad. She always looks sad in his paintings. Christ. Skip trial at least.
One more song for you tonight. It's a cover of a song I bet you know, but I like it better like this. Anyway, thanks for coming to my set. I'm Christina Campbell. I don't have CDs or anything, but if you like my stuff, just come back and see me again sometime. I'm always here. The two of us we should have known better The two of us Could be so much better You and I We're meant to get along But I want to cry When we get it wrong You and I On the edge of it all Hold me close, baby, when we start to fall. You and me forever more. Baby, that scares me. Can't we just be you and me? Everything comes in pairs, me and you. You and me got two of everything Two hands, two eyes Got two of everything Too, too much of everything That isn't right. How does she feel? She's happy. In the moment, she enjoys the singing. Heather isn't dead. She's a part of her. Synthesis. No CDs or anything, no legacy, no recordings. I'm always here, I'll live forever in this moment, okay? Let's go again.
ich sie um. Mehr hat was nicht. Now you can proposition me. You argued with him yesterday morning? Most mornings. It was how he woke up. The grudge in the heart of him. His diary doesn't mention any kind of argument. been in a few rooms like this one. Yeah, this is a nice one. You can break the forces of human civilization into two. One, the urge to control and to destroy. I guess motivated by fear. You can call that the law. And then there's the urge to create the heal. We are. Every important conflict in history comes down to the law versus the artist. It's hard because the artist acts as an individual, whereas the law is an army. If you don't love enough, it's easy to find yourself on the side of the law, even if you think you're an artist. A room full of your deviance. Minsky knew you had to become the thing you were trying to understand. Also, art is an intellectual exercise. It requires distance. You still think art is about ideas. This week. She usually comes in around nine, so we've got some time to kill. I've got something to help it go down. Inspiration. <laughs> God. That was real coke. Let's go again. <laughs> Carl, keep it simple. Until he hits the coke and montage, keep your head Reset on the drinks.
You're acting like you're lucky to be here, like you haven't worked hard to get exactly where you're standing. But it's no accident. You're incredibly talented. Well, uh, I guess you could say I've worked hard and I've gotten lucky. Shut up. Sorry. All I'm trying to say is that you don't think for a second that you don't deserve this. Your perfection. I'm not. Hopeless. Hey, hey. Relax. Hey, wait. Let's stop. Stop it! Crap, I'm sorry. Let me get a towel. Stop apologizing. O okay. I paid you $10 million for one night. Am I wrong? No. Sorry? You're not wrong. I'm not wrong. What does a $10 million night look like? It doesn't finish with a polite nod at the door. I want to feel like you appreciate it. Michael's under the bed. You're making a mess out of your party dress. Let's get you out of that thing. Into the bathroom. to Maria. She's in the bath with a face mask, ignores the phone, talks to the cat. Heather can't come to the phone right now. She's busy relaxing like a normal person. Beep! I know, babe. I know. I'll call them back when I'm done. Cat screeches as pre-lap. I'm gonna wait out here all night. It's my birthday. Let's finish up for the day. Ambrosio enters from the passage. Ambrosio opens the lid. Antonia in her shroud, her mother's corpse next to her. Her face will be seen. For you I have murdered. And now you're mine. This should be savored. Already I can feel life return to your body. 
Each pump of your heart gives rise to your breast. I once loved you truly. But after so much turbulence, only the grosser parts of my desire remain. He waits. Where am I? Mother? I had a dreadful dream. I must I let me go. I cannot stay here. Here's the here. Bibi Carmen's you. You're in no danger. She recognized me. Father Ambrosio, my friend. But why am I here? I dreamed I was dead. This tomb frightens me. Good Ambrosio, please take me home. Why do you look at me like that, Father? It's not been. This sepulcher is a place of joy, a private glade where we may lay and know each other. The darkness is a friendly cloak to cast over our delight. Your body will tremble with such pleasure. Unhand me. Why have you brought me to this place? This horror. Compose yourself. Perhaps I should explain your situation to you. The world above ground is forever lost to you. There they think you're dead. No one's coming for you. Here. You're mine. I have desires that I must gratify. I will die. Don't be afraid. I'll teach you to enjoy such things. Stop this struggling. It's childish. Yield. Put your lips to mine. No! As we're speaking plain, I should tell you. All of this struggling only excites me further. Okay. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Now finish. The honor is gone. What will take its place, I wonder? Hold. Wait, you more. Let me return home. Return home? So you can proclaim me to the world? No. You stay here. You will live here in this tomb, surrounded by death. Witness my suffering. It was you who plunged my soul into infamy. You've made me into a hypocrite, a rubbisher, an assassin. Spare me. I cannot. Enter Matilda. You are wanted in the chapel. You must join them soon or raise their suspicions. Then it come, please. Kill me now rather than subject me to further obscenities. That would be my pleasure. Again, less emotion. That would be my pleasure. One more time. Hold the dagger like this. That would be my pleasure. Hold. Gosh, she's suffered enough. I wish I'd never listened to you and your poison. I wish I'd never seen your face. Coward! You've already robbed this girl of everything that matters to her. What does it matter to finish the job and send her on to her god? You tremble at such a tiny cry. <laughs> Excellent. Here we cut. Got in one. Moving on. Sure. Scene 58, Bravo, take one. Action. They're playing Maria's music. Look at this place where she would be sad. Go, Luffy. Excuse me? Are you Maria? Can you... Uh, actually, yes. What's your name? Pearl. 
Pearl? That's a beautiful name. Can I sign your book, Pearl? Yes, please. <laughs> Go, sweetie. Thank you so much. Um, study hard. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're natural. <laughs> I'm shaking right now. I hope I signed your name right. Cut the line. You're a natural. <laughs> you're a natural. Shit. <laughs> I hope I signed your name right. Oh, Maria with a big M and a star over the eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I better go. I've got dance class learning. Teaching. I'll get those new moves down after. Yeah, turn around. Oh, was that okay? I still forget which side I'm playing sometimes. Yeah, that was great. Cut to a little while later. Are there sleeps? The other side of the plane, the bodyguard reads a paperback thriller. And cut. How was I? You stole our hearts. So? Hey, let's just go for this. I'll follow your lead. Then we'll run it with Randy to see how to tackle the fight. All right, just take it nice and slow, and we'll break it down from there. Feel free to hit me. I could take it. <laughs> Let me start in the elevator. <sighs> Those drinks went to my head. Don't crap out on me now. Talked a pretty good game back in the car. You ever fuck in a pool? It's not where she died? Yes. Guess that's creepy. No, I like it. Thinking about someone that famous dying there, fucking there. It's like a thrill to it, all that dark energy. It's like psychic Viagra. Fuck. You're a wild one. Hmm. Let me show you something. Ding. Door opens on the bedroom suite. It's dark. Andrew hits a light, subdued lighting. Bedroom hasn't been touched from when Heather stayed there and looks like a crime scene. Broken glass and bed sheets. This is where she was staying. I told them to leave it, so it's exactly the way it was when Maria died. This new art piece for my collection, I call it the end of celebrity. Hmm. Need another drink or something stronger. Why are you showing this to me? Sad. Yes, well, Maria had a sad life. What makes you say that? Something I observed. When you make a lot of money, you can go two ways. Either you grow with it, be happy, or you stay small, and it makes you sad. I'm sure she thought of herself as uh, some kind of artist, but when you get that famous, you're basically a whore. Is that what happened here? You want to know if I fucked her? Tell me what you did to her. I just noticed you look a lot like her. There's something weird going on. Do you like that I look like her? <laughs> Take off your clothes. Tell me what happened. She didn't die by accident. No, she didn't do as she was told. I didn't like that. You take off your clothes now. You killed her? Bitch.
Okay, I think we need to no, take a no, break. No, no, no. No, she gasps, scrambles around, reaches. The gold mic is still under the bed. Hand reaching there, and Mike. Did you kill her? Why do you fucking care? No, I didn't kill her. My wife did. She put you up to this, didn't she? She's a clever one. Normally, she has her boys do her dirty work. Sending you is a novel twist. Never thought she'd hurt me, though. Where is she? Where is she right now? She's probably up on the roof, swimming in the pool where she killed that bitch Maria. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll give you anything you want. You can't give me what I want. <laughs> You provoked me. You made me choose between them and you. I had them burn you. Greeted by the beautiful Isabella, 40s, wearing a white blouse and long dress. She has the vague continental accent that could put her from anywhere. Maria, it's such a pleasure to finally meet you and Isabella Hessenberg. Isabella kisses Heather on both cheeks, squeezing her upper arms approvingly. Heather smiles, slightly uncomfortable. So healthy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Would you like something to eat? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. I ate on the plane. Well, have a drink. A maid with a tray of champagne flutes steps forward. Isabella passes one to Heather, takes one for herself. Thank you. This place is so beautiful. Did you do all of this yourself? A beat. Isabella looks at her, eyes narrowed, and Heather thinks she's messed it up already. Then Isabella smiles. Uh, no. <laughs> Ford Hansen did most of it. Do you know him? He just did Calvin Klein's Miami home? I don't know Bort, but I do know Calvin Klein. I have some of his underwear. Isabella laughs politely. <laughs> well, shall I show you around? I would love that. The bodyguard follows with the bag as Isabella shows her two interior Hessenberg residence living room. A massive living room with a white grand piano and a view of the city. Isabella runs her hand along the piano. This is beautiful. Perhaps you can perform for us here later tonight. I'd love to, uh, but my Piano skills are a little rusty. We'll have someone play for you. She's sizing Maria up with her eyes. Andrew was surprised you said yes. He was convinced something like this would be beneath you. Oh, well, there's no shame in doing something for the money. Michelangelo worked on a commission. That would make Mr. Hessenberg the Pope? <laughs> Andrew is no Pope. <laughs> and you are no Michelangelo. I mean that as a compliment. All of Michelangelo's women look like men with tits stuck on them. And scene. Amy, that was fabulous. Should we uh, go get something to eat and then after this see how you do with Maria? I'll be Walker. Interior, 
Station corridor, Goodman, Walker, Walk and Talk. There was a robbery there last year, so we pulled the names of the tenants. You're